Hi, I'm Deep Mojumdar and today I'll be talking about my journey with the Clang Static Analyze and how we model smart pointers with it. So my talk revolves around my GSOC project from this year and my mentors were Artem, Gabor, Valerie and Rafael. Now, before I jump into the, the meat of my talk, first let's recap what's the Clang Static Analyzer in case you don't know. So the CSA is a static analysis framework that uses symbolic execution over all possible parts in a program to flag various buggy scenarios. So we're not executing code directly, we're using symbolic execution. And this picture roughly represents how the CSA analyzes a program. Given a program, it splits it up into several execution parts like this. On some, it may find a bug, that's a report. On some, it might find a warning. So that's a less fatal sort of bug like a memory leak and a bug might be a null pointer dereference. It may find both, in which case the, second, the less important one is suppressed because that is never reachable. Or it may find nothing, in which case it says no bugs. However, this no bug report of the CSA must be taken with a grain of salt because the CSA tries to have a no false positive rate, which means that a bug reported by the CSA is almost certainly a bug. However, the absence of bug reports with the CSA does not indicate the absence of bugs. This is different from the model for some other static analysis systems, especially the one in Rust. CSA made this choice deliberately because it suits the use cases of CSA better. So the diagram I showed you in the previous slide is internally known as the exploded graph. Now, how is the data in the exploded graph collected? In the CSA, this is done by something known as checkers. And almost everything in the CSA is done by checkers. Checkers can create data by analyzing the program. It can modify existing data on basis of further program data it sees. And by using the data, it flags various buggy scenarios. And when I say data, I mean the various constraints and possible values of a variable or expression at some point in the program. We may also want to store some metadata which helps us deal with complex scenarios such as the such as dealing with smart pointers. So while modeling smart pointers, we actually have two checkers. One is known as smart pointer modeling, and that is a checker that actually creates the data by analyzing analyzing the program. The other one is called smart pointer checker, which uses the data to detect null dereferences of the smart pointer. This decoupling allows us to, allows us to have multiple checkers for modeling various smart pointers. We have three in the standard library at the moment. All the while we're having a single checker that emits the bug report. So we don't duplicate code for that. Now, how are we actually modeling a smart pointer? Well, for modeling a unique pointer, it turns out that all we need to keep track of is the nullity of the raw pointer inside the smart pointer. That alone is enough for us to know when the, when the unique pointer dereference is safe or not. So if you, if you can take a look at this code block, PTR is initialized to a non-null value by make it unique. Therefore, the CSA knows that this dereference is safe and it emits no bug report. After PTR.reset, the CSA knows that PTR has been set to null because reset had no argument. And therefore, it knows that when we have this dereference on this line, this is a null pointed dereference and therefore it must emit a bug. Contrast it with this block of code. Here, the function bar receives PTR via value. So just by looking at this function, we have no idea whether PTR is null or not null. And since the CSA is not sure, it emits no report because it is not because it can't conclusively say that PTR is null at this dereference. However, when, when we use this if condition, if the if branch is taken, then we know that not PTR is true, which implies that PTR is null and therefore, this dereference of PTR is unsafe. And therefore, the, the CSA emits a bug report over here. Now, since we're keeping track of nullity, the question is, what is there to model in that case? And it turns out that for a complex class like standard unique pointer, we model everything. And by everything, I mean all member functions, all constructors, and all destructors, because all of these have to have specific behavior in them, which is not obvious. And by modeling these mem with these functions, we add in the checkered semantics of the function at hand. 
And this is not necessarily automatically discoverable because the source code may not be available to the CSF for analysis. After all, the interface to a C++ library is via its header file and the header file need not contain the entire code. Therefore, we need to manually encode this information within the checker. Now, what if we don't model all aspects of a class? Well, there are a couple of things that may happen as a consequence of this. For starters, we may have loss of information. So suppose we don't model the reset method of std unique pointer and assume that source code is not available. So the CSA will default to something known as conservative evaluation, which basically removes information which may have been modified by the model method, which means that suppose we have a, we have a pointer like a smart pointer like this and we call reset and reset has not been modeled. Since the CSA does not know what reset may do about it, it simply discards all information it had about stir PTR. And since it has discarded information about it, it has no way of telling whether this is a null dereference or not. We can tell that because we know reset does make it null, but the CSA can't because we haven't modeled it completely. And therefore we have no warning. On the other hand, we may have inconsistent information in, within the CSA. So as an example, suppose we don't model the destructor of unique pointer. And since the destructor is usually in the header file, the code is available and CSA will try to evaluate it in a process known as inlining. The destructor for std unique pointer looks very roughly like this. So the CSA will have a problem when it tries to analyze this line because it has never seen the variable inner pointer till now. Since all the other methods have been modeled, inner pointer has no enti entry within the CSA. Therefore, the CSA thinks that we are dealing with an uninitialized variable, possibly containing garbage value. And therefore, this statement is a bug. However, there's another problem because this statement is within the standard library. The CSA also is trained to know that the standard library cannot have any bugs. Therefore, this bug must be suppressed, which solves this particular problem. But it, it, it has unwanted side effects in other checkers. So for an instance, once we have when we have this code and the destructor is not modeled, we note that raw is constructed over here, but it's never destroyed. And therefore, the memory uh, as associated with the raw is leaked. However, the leak check gets suppressed because at this, at the function exit, there is a destructor call for a unique pointer. And since there's a bug in that which is being suppressed, all the other bugs at that point is, are also suppressed. And therefore, we have no leak warning. So that's another false negative. So moral of the story, if you're going to model a C++ class in CSA, we have to model all parts of it to avoid such side effects. So as a closure, I'd like to mention that we have an almost complete model for state unique pointer right now within the CSA. And the way the modeling has been done, it provides us a framework for modeling other smart pointers such as stood shared pointer and stood weak pointer. So definitely these would be things for us to work on in future and extend the checker and make it more complete. And as such, new developers are very much welcome. So if you want to join in in this process, please feel free to hit up us on CFE Dev. Thank you for listening. That's all I have to say.